I remember like it was yesterday. I grew up in the suburban area of the metropolitan area of New Ulm, Minnesota. 23rd North Street. Our family had a house right next to my grandfather's farm. And he had a big farm, just a usual farm. He had cows and he had horses and those kind of things. Um, and he kept these all in pens. And he had this one pen where the cows were kept that just intrigued me. And every day I, I walked up this pen, and this pen had this fence around it. And this fence was made of three wires that were parallel, and every so often there was a horizontal post holding it up. And on this horizontal post was a red blinking light. The uniqueness about this fence is that not only could you see it, and not only could you uh, touch it, but you could hear it. Well, as far as the touching is concerned, I asked my brother who was standing with me at one time, I said, what about that red blinking light? And he said, well, the fence turns off and turns on and turns off and turns on. See, this is like an electric fence. And it's meant to keep bigger animals in their place because if the big animals got out, it's tough to bring them back. He said, if you time it out right, and you hit the fence when the light goes off, nothing will happen. So I'm nine years old, I figure I'm pretty quick. All I gotta do is slap that fence, time the, time the light out. Off, on, off, on, slap. The feeling was a combination of electricity and stupidity, <laughs> followed by a great immense part of guilt and remorse. It was the stupidest thing I had done up to that point, until 15 minutes later, I did it again. <laughs> because I didn't do it right. Fences have a limited amount of uses. They, they keep things in, they keep things out, they provide borders, they provide uh, uh, you know, territories, they separate. In today's reading, we are seeing that we are freed from the guilt of sin. And what's really important is we gotta know from what, we, what are we freed and how are we freed that way. God's word is like a fence. It's a curb that kind of shows us where we should go. It's a guide that directs us in the way that we should go, and it certainly is a mirror to show us what side of the fence we're on. Now here we get a little bit confused because we think, well, I'm not all that bad, and I've probably kept a lot of those laws. But the passage says, whoever keeps the whole law and stumbles in just one point, he's guilty of breaking it all. And what's more, we know that another fence has come up because of the fence of the law. Sin itself is a fence. It has separated us from God. In the Old Testament, we hear in the Garden of Eden how Adam and Eve had sinned and then their sins separated them from God. And it says God's face was hidden from them. There was a consequence. And that consequence was separation. And that has dropped all the way down from you or from Adam and Eve to you and I. It says, surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. So our head starts to swim a little bit. How can I get my way out of this? On a farm also there's ways to try to lead animals along without that fence. And one could be a halter, one could be a rope. So a halter is basically for animals that are relatively tame. You can take them where they want to go. That, that, that halter kind of controls them. And for animals a little bit bigger, like a 2,000 pound bull, all it really takes is a nose ring. And a 2,000 pound bull is controlled by the little ring. In the same way, we have sins that control us whatever they might be. Those sins conquer us, they can control us, and we're trying to find a way out frantically. And we look at that law and we say, I can do this myself, I can find my way out, but the Bible passage says there is no one who is declared righteous in the sight of the works of the law, but through the law, through the mirror of the law, we become conscious of sin, and we are just swimming in a muck and mire trying to find our way out, and we can't do it. So now what? Well, God has a plan. It's built on the sin of ourselves that's put on the stained, red blood stained cross of Jesus, where God took the righteousness of Jesus and put them on our shoulders, and he took our sins and put them on Jesus' shoulders. That was the plan of the gift that he gave us, especially this time of year when we're thinking about Thanksgiving and Christmas coming up. We sang a little while, O comforter of priceless worth. The wages of sin is death, but this gift, this gift that we got from God is the greatest gift of all. It's eternal life in Christ Jesus. And we celebrate that in the months coming ahead here. We sang in the, in the hymn, may sing your praises eternally. Our response to this gift is one of singing. Our response is one of saying thanks to God for what he's done for us. And we do that here when we have concerts and we do that in our classrooms. We do that by celebrating the birth of Jesus who is a perfect substitute for our sins. 
It would seem kind of ironic or even ludicrous for someone to remain in their sins and not want to have anything to do with that. But that still happens, doesn't it? Back when I taught grade school, and, and a lot of our, our teachers here at Wisconsin Lutheran had taught grade school, and we did celebrate the Christmas uh, lesson. We did have our Christmas service. We all remember that. At Star of Bethlehem, every year I, I read this, this story to my kids, and maybe some of you out there remember that, or maybe probably not. So the Grinch wanted to steal Christmas, which seems kind of, kind of silly. He wanted to keep Christmas from coming. But ironically, when we remain in our sin and try to find our own way out of sin, we prevent Christmas from coming. We don't want anything to do with, with Christ, anything to do with Jesus, what he did for us. In Scripture, in the Old Testament, we hear an account of Joseph who went through something like this with his brothers. As you know, Joseph was a, a very popular son of his father, got a lot of gifts. His brothers got a little bit jealous of that, sold him into slavery. He went into Egypt. As time went on, he worked himself up the ladder and became second in control of the world at that time. His brothers had to come to Egypt, and through a series of tests, he, Joseph wanted to see how his brothers had turned out, and it turned out that they were okay. And he said, I forgive you. And everything was cool. Until dad died. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, what if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back for all the wrongs we have did, done to him? So they sent words to Joseph saying, your father left these instructions before he died. This is what you're to say to Joseph. I ask that you forgive your brothers for the sins and the wrongs they committed treating you so badly. Now please forgive the sins of the servants of the God of your father. And when their message came to Joseph, he wept. And he wept because he had already forgiven them. He understood that they did not accept that. They were still in the slavery of that guilt. His brothers then came and threw themselves down before him. We are your slaves, they said. But Joseph said to them, Don't be afraid. <clears throat> Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So then don't be afraid. I will provide for your children. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them that they were forgiven. So what about the Grinch? Did he figure it out? No, he didn't. He puzzled and puzzled till his puzzle was sore and the Grinch thought of something he had before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, he thought, means a little bit more. It actually means a lot bit more, doesn't it? While the Grinch didn't think of it, we can't just pick on him. There are a lot of people in the world that have no idea they are free because of what Christ did for us, his righteousness. Those people are needing to hear the great message that we have. We can share that message with them at our workplace, here at school, in our communities, or maybe one day, just maybe, you guys might be considering going into the full-time ministry, being a teacher, a pastor, a staff minister. That message is so crucial, that great exchange that God has given to us, putting our sins on Jesus and his righteousness in our sake, so that we are freed from the guilt of sin. Amen.